Referee's underway. There's going to be a protest. Wow, oh, Spitzel has to avoid a collision. Great start by the Canadians. Consistency certainly has paid off for the Canadians and the Brits. Bermuda's great sound is just minutes away from coming alive for the second day of the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. The spectators on the water and ashore at the sailing mecca in the Atlantic Ocean are in for a treat with perfect winds for the nine teams practicing right now for the first event of season three. Alongside Stevie Morrison and Freddie Carr, I'm Todd Harris, and the preliminary bouts on day one have set us up for a great day's racing. This season's fleet includes two new nations, Canada and Switzerland, and the world's best sailors are ready to go. The first race of season three saw the British team look to repeat their 2021 Bermuda performance. Great start by Ainsley. Great Britain, more than 300 meters, and we're on leg four of seven in the first race of season three. And the race one victory goes to Great Britain and Ben Ainsley. But the story of the day was a new team on the circuit. Canada, the fastest boat on the race course at the moment. What a performance by this new crew. They took a second place in race one and pounced in race two for an opportunity at the lead. Ace, he's got to keep clear. He's got to keep clear, you hear? Go on, umpires. Press, it's ridiculous. Press, Phil. Pressing, pressing. And Phil Robertson and the Canadians are on their way to picking up their very first win. France finished second in race two and had a chance at race three victory until the British team's pace took them into the lead. Here is Great Britain. They pulled in front in the last moments of this race. And the win will go to Sir Ben Ainsley. The battle of the new teams is without doubt won by Canada, who sit top of the standings. Switzerland, though, at the other end of the leaderboard in ninth place. Despite two race wins, Great Britain had to settle for second overall after their penalty with the USA. Aye, aye, aye. Oh, oh, Great Britain, he's got to give room for Spittle here. There's going to be a protest. Aye. Wow, Spittle has to avoid a collision. Penalty GBR relative USA. Oh. Uh, and this is going to hurt Ainsley and his British crew. So day one complete, we move our attention now to day number two. Here is the scoreboard after the first day's racing. Three races and Canada, the new kids on the block, out in front, 25, two points clear of Great Britain. Australia also very consistent on the day. France had their moments on day number one. The USA looked good in one race where they finished in third, but then two disappointing finishes. Work to do for Denmark, New Zealand, Spain, and the other new team, Switzerland. Well, a big spectator fleet has taken to the sound again today with three races coming up. The first two are fleet races. That will decide the top three teams on points who go into the final to decide the season three Bermuda champion. The big surprise, of course, is at the top of the pile is the new team, Canada, led by gunslinger Phil Robertson, who heads up his third team in three seasons after leaving Spain under a cloud here in Sail GP. Phil Robertson is a gun for hire. He took the brand new Spanish team to event contenders in just one season. Oh, big, big incident there. He pushes the limit and even made an event final. A new leader in Sail GP season two. It was always the ambition for the team to be all Spanish, meaning Phil's time was limited. Come San Francisco, he quit because he felt he wasn't given enough time to prepare and things got a little heated. That's what it is. 
Geordie Shammer stepped in to drive in his first event and what happened next shows how experience counts. Oh, a collision on board the American boat and the Spanish boat. Introducing Canada. And guess who's been hired as their driver to bring this fresh team up to speed? That's right, Phil Robertson. If you were to outclass them, your previous employers this season, would that be very, very satisfying for you, Phil? I couldn't give a rat's ass, to be honest. Um, we're, we've got one focus and it's on the Australians. We need to catch up, so we're, we're solely focused on them and being as good as them. New team, new adventure and new people and yeah we've had an awesome start, we've got a great bunch of people and good culture in the team and some awesome owners. We'll be pushing pretty hard and uh, set high expectations on ourselves, a win would be a great result. Hey Phil, it's Stevie back here, uh, day one leaders going into uh, the final day of racing here in Bermuda, amazing performance. Uh, what are you guys going to be hoping to do better today than you did yesterday? Look, I'm not sure if we're focusing on too much about what we can try and improve on. Um, we're just trying some different things today. We've got a lot to learn as a team and uh, yeah, it's our first day of racing together. So yeah, there's plenty to take from yesterday. and. Today is about learning as much as we can, so that's the main focus. Preparations for today's racing has been underway since first light, with the tech teams having a big job rechecking all the F50s, getting them ready and into the water for the race teams. They've been busy, too, working with the data and video from yesterday to study the performances with their coaches and finalizing strategies for today. In the middle of all that activity earlier, we buttonholed some of the drivers to get their thoughts on what may take place today on The Great Sound. We need two good races, and then we'll make that final race. And then, yeah, it'd be nice to um, sort of reverse fortunes from last year and, uh, and steal that final race. Um, if we make that final race, we've got an, a really good track record. Um, we know that we can win that final race. A three-boat match race is turning into a bit of a specialty of ours. The conditions are a bit stronger breeze today, maybe a bit more steady. But as always, it'll come down to you know decent starts, boat handling, teamwork. And goal is to get into that final three race. And then anything's possible. I think the, the team is in good mindset. And uh, it's a bit windy. so. We, are, we like this condition and I think it will be good today. And are you happy with how the team performed yesterday? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, the first one was quite uh, interesting, but the two, two, two other was really good and I think we are in good shape. You know, we were, we were racing out there, we were in the mix, so that was a really positive start for us. Rewatching other races felt a bit frustrating at times because, yeah, we, we just missed a few opportunities, but hopefully today we can go out there and and improve those little mistakes that make a big difference. Massive crowds on hand as we are under six minutes away from racing here on Bermuda's Great Sound. Right now, we're going to sit it down, checking on the water with Olympic silver medalist Lisa Darmanin and Japan Sail GP driver and Olympic gold medalist Nathan Outridge. Well, it looks like we might be treated to a little bit more action today as the teams have been out there training for the last two hours in a little bit more breeze. Nathan, what should we be looking out for today? Yeah, with the wind being higher today, you can see the boats are going to go a lot faster. The starting is going to be a lot easier because there's less bad air in the starting box. So I think the fleet will be more even when they come to Mark 1. I think with manoeuvres, they're going to be able to keep them on the foils at all times. So it's going to be more of a boat speed race today. A few disappointments for some teams yesterday. Uh, who were the disappointments for you? Yeah, a few teams really struggled yesterday. Um, the Kiwis had moments where they were at the front of the fleet, but ultimately had two pretty bad races when they were fighting in the pack. And um, the USA team really didn't have a fantastic day. It could have been a great day, but that penalty situation with GBI really hurt both of those teams. So they're the ones that will be on the move today. Well, our forecast from AccuWeather is for 22 kilometre per winds from the south, gusting to around 30 kilometres per hour. So we are in store for some more action. It's coming from the south, but it may move further right and may get gustier throughout the afternoon. It's going to be a great day of racing, so over to Stevie to take us through the course map. Well, from up in the clouds, we can see that getting a good start is vital, so I need my red boat crossing the start line as soon as possible after the gun. The first leg's going to be crucial with some close quarter action, but leading at Mark 1 is absolutely vital. My red boat's in the lead, so I'm going to sail at an angle to the wind to increase my speed and extend to the boundary to try and minimise manoeuvres. 
My blue boat is behind. It's unlikely I'll pass Stevie by following him. Luckily, this is where the course opens up, giving me the opportunity to turn early, looking for clear wind and water. Hopefully, I'll have good boat speed, really putting the pressure on Stevie's red boat coming into gate two, a big congestion point in the race. Another crucial decision as I approach gate two to turn up wind. I can turn left or right, but I see more wind to the left turn, so I decide to lead round that mark. My blue boat is still just behind and I choose to go to the opposite gate mark to Stevie. This could be great for me as we'll be going upwind on different parts of the race course. Time will tell if this has worked out for me as the boats come back together halfway up leg three. Remember, I can't sail straight into the wind, so I'm going to sail as close as I can to it at roughly 45 degrees. At the top of the course, I'll be chasing hard through another gate mark before turning downwind. This is a high boat speed acceleration point of the race, a big test of the crew work. Then, depending on the wind strength, there are either one or two more laps plus a short blast to the finish. Well, my key to success was getting a great start, leading at mark one, and then choosing the best side of the course with the strongest wind. Sorry about that one, Freddie. Under three minutes to go to the start of day number two here at the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix, presented by Hamilton Princess. As we approach the 2.30 mark, it'll be race number four and five, and then race six will be the top three point getters. All right, Freddie, you've got all the data. You heard from Lisa and Nathan down on the water. What are you expecting today, and who do you think will excel? Well, let, let's concentrate on race four first. It's what I think is the elim elimination race. All nine teams right now can make race sixth where the top three point getters race it out to be crowned the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix champions this year. But there is pressure on the USA, Denmark, New Zealand, Spain and Switzerland at the bottom of the leaderboard. They're going to be looking at race four to stay alive. They need to be in the top one or two. Now, in terms of wind conditions, there's a bit more breeze, as, as Nathan and Lisa said. Therefore, I'd be expecting 100% fly times off all the boats, putting less pressure on the manoeuvres and more pressure on top end speed. And Stevie, with those conditions, as we go under a minute 45 for the start of race number four, it seems like it's simple. Keep it simple, and you seem to do well as the those at the top of the points ladder have done that for day number one. I think if you get a good start, it can seem very, very simple. But I think one thing that's going to be absolutely crucial out there is it's a gusty wind. Now, the sailors can't see the gust, but they can see the effect the gust has on the water. We're looking for dark patches on the water. That will suggest more wind. And the sailors are going to be looking for those because if they can find that more breeze, they're going to be going faster and that will make their life a lot easier as well. So we have one minute and 12 seconds to go until the start. With the course set up right now, I'm looking over the top of the race course. We've got the reach to Mark 1, and then Mark 1 to boundary is quite a long distance, opening up the jibe option for boats behind. As we get to gate 2, the right turn looks favourable. That all translates to me as the first downwind leg from Mark 1 to gate 2 is wide open tactically. Quick reminder, Canada, one of the new teams joining Sail GP in Season 3, leads on points right now. Now, Great Britain, remember, won two races yesterday, but a disastrous eight in race number two puts them into second place. Australia also in that running. So consistency the key, keeping it simple the key, Freddie. And Stevie, we are now 30 seconds away from day two in race four. Well, there are all the crew lined up here. We've got the Australian crew out the back. We can hear in the background Tom Slingsby on board Australia talking about finding a space. New Zealand coming in from the top of the screen. But at the moment, it's the Americans towards the blue pole position spot on the line that have control just 10 seconds to go who's got their timing right it looks like Spain and the USA at the bottom of the line are gonna be coming in fast no room for content the French at the top the French are trying to barge in wow that was punchy as the line went clear penalty on the French boat they're gonna to need to drop behind the fleet but it's the Spanish crew at the bottom of the line who are absolutely charging towards mark one and they should have control of their first decision so a near collision on day number two to kick things off and race number four and it's yeah. This is the umpire. At the left this side is the of your screen, they will have the lead at Mark flagged. 1. Whoa. Taking She's not entitled. Black flag on the French Whoa. boat there. That was a seriously aggressive move by Contan de la Pierre. What a mistake. They looked so good before this race. But anyway, at Mark 1, it's the Spanish taking the opportunity. Mark number one, it is Spain, New Zealand, Denmark, the USA, and Great Britain who is involved in that start line fracas. Craig Mitchell, the chief umpire, Freddie making the call. 
And this is what I was talking about in the pre-start, a long distance from Mark 1 to the boundary. Here's the Spanish pushing in, and Ainsley and the British crew defended their rights perfectly. Pretty loose by the, Sp uh, by the French crew, apologies, and they were fourth overnight, and they're certainly not going to be fourth after race four. So nine teams down to eight now. France, black flag, they are out of this race. And the racing goes on as Spain gets that whole shot. New Zealand second, Denmark sitting in third. Look at the speeds. Well, here we go. We see at the bottom there, the Spanish really have the top boat speed at the moment. Nearly 10 kilometers an hour faster than the Americans. They're probably sailing in more wind. They look nicely lined up. And here we are on board with the Spanish. Looks like one more jibe. So three boats that I mentioned at the top of the show that needed to perform in this race were Spanish, New Zealand and Denmark. And boy, oh boy, are they doing that. The leaderboard has really congested overall. And as we expected, there's a right turn at the bottom. They've paid the price of an extra jibe. Oh, New Zealand looks to have priority. They're just inside there. They had the right of way, Peter Burling and his crew, and he's taken advantage. As Freddie said, this is a race where Burling needs to perform if he's to have any chance of making the final. New Zealand really struggling yesterday, finishing in race number one in seventh. They bounce back for a third in race two and then an eighth in race three. Great helicopter view up the great sound of Bermuda here. As we can see, a big wide open course for the crews. There's the darker patches of the water to the left-hand side there. That should suggest good breeze on the left-hand side of the course. Uh, New Zealand are, and the Danish now. Showing is in the lead, but how are they going to look when they come back together? So Nikolai Sehested, the head man for Denmark. Trying to keep them in play as they move up to second place behind New Zealand. This is like three of seven. Race number four on day two. Season three off and running here in Bermuda. Here we go. We see the ladder lines at the moment. And it's really, really showing us a tight, tight race here as we've got Denmark coming in from the right-hand side of the screen. They have the right of way. New Zealand and Burling must keep clear here. It's going to be a really tight cross at the moment. At the moment, we're going to have to get down. It looks tight on the water. Nathan, what's happening out there at the moment? Yeah, Stevie, you were just saying it does look quite windy on the left-hand side of this track, and it looked like New Zealand made the gain by getting out to that side. But now they're splitting again, and I think it's going to be Denmark's turn to make a gain, and I can see Australia out on that side as well. We're sitting up at the top marks, and it's really light in the middle of the gate right now, but the ley line coming in from the left-hand side looks strong, so I expect Denmark might make a potential gain here. So what Nathan's talking about there is if you draw a line down the middle of your TV screen where Australia is heading, Nathan is saying there's better wind, better wind, more boat speed, so we might see Australia step from third up to second and maybe even first. They just tack now that yellow line that indicates a lay line for us. That should mean they've got a good chance of making it up to gate number three from here. And it's all about accuracy right now because it's tight. Doesn't look good for Australia at the moment. Looks like maybe the winds turned to the right. We could see the New Zealand crew sailing nearly straight up the ladder lines. Looks like a good move for Burling and his New Zealand crew. They're ahead for me at this moment in time. And as we expected, in slightly more breeze, 24 kilometers an hour, four kilometers an hour more than yesterday, we're seeing 100% flight times, and the average speeds across the fleet are unbelievably similar. More tight crosses all across as we look at the fleet coming in here on Lake 3 of 7. This is race 4, race 5 will come up shortly, and then the top three boats go into race number 6. Look at the chaos and the congestion at the middle of the track. Not a great tack by the New Zealand crew there, and look at the boat speed advantage that the Danish have. We're approaching gate 3 at the top here. Are they going to look for one more manoeuvre on Denmark? It's going to be tight with New Zealand, tight with New Zealand and Canada. It looks like the Canadians have threaded their way through the fleet. They were sick at the bottom gate, number two, but at gate number three, it's going to be Canada up to third place. Brilliant work by that crew there as Denmark lead New Zealand away at gate three. And Mainsley sneaks inside. He has the right of way. Canada must stay clear. There's nothing in it in the pack. As they make their way through gate three, that one is branded near in recognition of GP's new global partner and the blockchain technology that they bring. 
These feel like big moments halfway through race four, and these feel like really big moments in the whole of Bermuda Grand Prix. So Denmark looking at an early jibe here as they make their way onto leg four of seven in race number four. Well, we're on board with Danish there. They've already jibed, so it really was an early jibe. That's, that's the voice of Nikolai Sehested you're hearing there. Doesn't think he's quite making the gate. You can just wow. see the leader there, the Danish, Sehested. You can hear him talking now. It's only 23 metres ahead of New Zealand. Mark, this is the Mark 1 positions to now. Our overnight night leader, Canada, went round Mark 1 in 8th. They've dogged it out up to 4th, just slipped to 5th, but they're still leading this Grand Prix overall. Nine boats started now down to eight as France got only the second black flag in sail GP history. Remember last year, Spain picked one up in season two. So eight boats racing here in this fourth race here in Bermuda. And this is a close one at the top. And it looks like it's maneuver time. The Kiwis initiate it first. Two jibes here now. We see the gate there on the right-hand side of screen. Both crews were talking about wanting to turn right at the bottom, but are they going to keep it simple? Looks to me like they're both going to go left turn, trying to stay simple. Big lead for these two crews, nearly 100 metres ahead of the third place Spanish. So one more upwind and one more downwind to go. As things stand, Spain, France, USA and Switzerland would be eliminated and unable to make the final race, race six. There we go. We could see the New Zealand crew were sailing in the turbulent wind of the Danish boat. That means they can't sail as fast. And Peter Burling's chosen to tack away. That was his only chance of an overtake was to sail in clean wind and be able to get to top speed again. Switzerland having to give way to Jimmy Spithill and the Americans as they will come down and split the course. And they are running out of time, currently sitting in seventh place. They move up to fifth with that move. Good turn. Guys, are you surprised with what Australia, the US, and Great Britain are doing here in this race? Is it, is it a huge surprise? I think they just didn't get a great start. Nikolai Sehested, we're on board with him at the moment. It's just a class act. Look, you can see this Danish crew. Uh, this is the umpires. Uh, penalty Canada, relative Australia, windward boat failing to keep clear. Oh, that could be, could be a costly error by the Canadians. Nathan, you're down on the water. Are you surprised to see the British crew not able to move back through the fleet? USA and Great Britain seem stuck at the back. Yeah, we just um, saw a really tight top mark rounding there previously, and then looked like GBI just got stuck in the fight and had boats go past them on either side. So, you know, this race has got everything at the moment. We've had plenty of shifts out here, and a penalty just came there for Canada as well. And we've got a really good fight going on as they approach the top mark between New Zealand and Denmark. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting how it plays out. It's getting really puffy at the top of the course. And there's no way I'm going to be able to pick a shift for you today, Stevie. <laughs> We're lucky to have Nathan Outeridge, the CEO and driver for Sail GP Japan. And we always apologize for the delay in signal getting down as our signals are bouncing literally around the world. One more tack for the Danish crew, and they really put in a good performance on this upwind leg. The ladder line's now showing us they're nearly 100 metres ahead of the New Zealand crew. This is a real masterclass. Disappointed with Denmark yesterday, to be perfectly honest with you, but give them a bit of clear wind, give them a bit of space, and we're seeing what we started to see in practice. And, well, we didn't expect that. Great Britain, he had the wind sandwich, as you called it yesterday, but uh, not sure what meal this is, but he's not going to be tasting very good for him right now. Absolutely not. To your point, Denmark yesterday, going with a fifth place, a ninth, and then they backed it up on race three with a fourth. And this is how things stand with a little bit to go in race four, the race to the final. Do remember the top one, two, three going to race six and shoot it out for Bermuda Sail Grand Prix. Go. See now the Danish one more manoeuvre. They look like they're in a comfortable lead at the moment. Just needs a good manoeuvre. New Zealand, well, they're not going away. It's still tight. And the Danish crew have touched it in a little bit. Let's see the rounding. Coming down in five. Coming down in three. I reckon two. One. And Denmark through gate number five, branded near in recognition of Sail GP's new global partner. 
So here we go. Denmark leads on the final leg with New Zealand, Spain, and the USA, the top four. The Americans trying to claw back some points to see if they can salvage their regatta and get into that championship final race of the day. You have to be in the top three points to do it. And right now, Denmark and New Zealand is making it very hard for the Americans as they now drop back to sixth. Oh, look at the speed fall off the Canadian boat, trying to sneak round the mark. They've done a great job up here. They had a penalty against the USA before, but they've still snuck round. They're a long way behind the Spanish crew, but this could be crucial for Canada in their race for the final. That's yep. their big moment in the race there. The Kiwis at the vital moment. Right, big turn of boat speed there. Look at the angle difference as they start to put turbulent wind onto the Danish boat. It's only going to get harder for Nikolai Sehested from here, but it is close. So it's New Zealand and Denmark out in front. They're on leg number six of seven. They're coming to the next gate, and then it'll be a right-hand turn and a blast to the finish line. Nathan, you've got a great view down there. What do you think, and how do you think New Zealand defends this? Uh, New Zealand just did a great job there with their jive. They jive right inside Denmark, and um, perfect jive to take the lead. And I can see from where I'm looking now, they've rolled over the top of Denmark. And so now it's just about picking the ley line through the bottom gate and bringing it home from here. Well, luckily for us, there's a big yellow line showing us where that ley line is. Peter Burling doesn't have that, but he seems pretty confident that the ley line's really close. And Burling, good jibe, should be set up from here. Uh, don't, not uh, sure if you are going to jump in back. The Kiwis did a super nice job of soaking down the ladder. Big mistake yep. by the Danish crew as well. Look, top of screen, they've fallen off the foils. They're going to struggle to make it back up to the gate from here. I don't know what's happened. Opportunity for the Spanish crew at the moment. And this is going to be a walk in the park for Burling wow. from here. What an error by Sehested and his crew. He said he was going to sit there and play it easy. Anything but that. Big, big mistake by the Danish. So New Zealand with a stellar performance on leg number five. They get the roll on leg number six. And in the end, the Kiwis on day number two take the win. That's the form we expected from Peter Burling and company. Spain, after a great start, some trouble in the middle. They'll come through and get second place. And now Freddie Carr goes to work on the Abacus, trying to figure out who is going to get into that championship. Because, Freddie, to your point, this is elimination race. There's a lot of teams now that are scrapping for just single points. Well, we're going to be definitely counting all the way down the fleet before we can find out that. Sehested salvages a third there. That'll keep his hopes alive. And the Australians, well, he was slippery Slingsby yesterday, and he's keeping that going today. How about he's this? pulled back through. Tight race to the finish here. America must stay away from Great Britain, but as they come to the mark, he will be entitled to room inside that finish if he can get there. Ainsley drops the second board, opens up the space, but I think it's going to be just enough for Great Britain to stay fifth. Six for Jimmy Spitz. It was really, really tight on that finish there. As we see Canada, wow, costly penalty on the final downwind. Seventh place for them after they've done such a good job of getting back in the race. And that penalty, the boundary penalty on that final downwind gave up the points for Canada. And Britain stepping up to fifth allowed Great Britain to jump to the top of the leaderboard here after race fours and leapfrog Canada. Oh, so take a deep breath and what a race. It starts off with only the second black flag in Sail GP history and then the Kiwis roll the Danes on the last leg. Well, the key moment was out of the jibe on the last downwind. Unfortunately, we just managed to miss getting it on camera, but it was an amazing jibe got by the Kiwis and managed to put about five kilometers an hour boat speed difference between them and Rockwall, the Danish team. We heard from Sehested say, just sit here, stay comfortable. We'll roll them back when we jibe into the bottom gate, but that was not the case. Pete Burling and Blair Took did a really nice job of soaking down the ladder line and taking that jibe option away from the Danish. The Danish then sailed past ley line, must have had a malfunction. The Kiwis went on to win.
Let's take a look at the results after those four races. And I'll tell you what, Great Britain salvaging some points there. 29 tied with Canada and Australia now sitting in third place. New Zealand three points out despite that win in race number four. And Spain sitting two points back of that. Wow. Denmark and the USA, France getting disqualified with only the second black flag. They really have shot themselves in the foot. Probably no chance of them making it to the final race in Switzerland. One of the new teams still learning. Stop it. Looks like they're gone. No, the tip of the wing is in the water. He's got a big issue in the middle of the fleet here. Nathan Outeridge, very late to manoeuvre, and he's collided with the US crew. This is a big moment on board here. The Japanese boat on board the American boat. Hopefully, no one's hurt, but that was a big misjudgment from Outeridge. One gust, though, too strong saw the Spanish boat capsize. The sailors are all safe and okay, but the boat suffered extensive damage. You can see the top part of the wing completely ripped off. They stopped it, this could be over. Capsize coming. Oh, and it capsized for Great Britain in the finale. And so now it is two boats battling for the title as Australia sails away. Oh, oh, there's a collision! Oh, it's the American boat and the Spanish boat. Oh my lord! Oh, 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 a massive miscalculation from Ainsley, and there is no doubt on the Japanese boat. Disaster for the Japanese team. So as we know, Sail GP exists to make our sport better, and then we use that platform for a better planet. This is a great example of our Inspire Racing program, our world-class racing program, allowing a pathway into the F50. Wow, race number four now complete. There you see, look across the board, gentlemen. Great Britain, look at that first day. They get two firsts, but it's that eighth place. They just did them in, but they still sit on top, tied with Canada. And so now it comes down to this big race, Fred. So everybody's chasing Australia on, t on 28 points. Mathematically, USA can still get there. France and uh, Switzerland are out of it. But USA, if they win the race and Australia come last, could still just scrape into the final three. So the Australians, the Kiwis, Spain, the USA and Denmark will be really battling in this next race. Well, we know that in the, this race, the start will be crucial as it was in race four. Eyes at the beginning were on New Zealand and Australia out the back trying to make a sniping type move. But as we came closer to the start and the action drew in towards this start line, we had to focus in on the British boat at the top of the line here. They're perfectly lined up as we pause the action to come in right at the end. There's a no-go zone and the French crew are up there. They try and force in. They've got no right of way to go. Ainsley holds the door tight, finally opening it only at the last minute to stop Contan de la Pierre and his French crew smashing into that start boy. And well, it was near disaster for the French crew there. Penalty, black flag, no good. Massive crowds on hand here on the great sound for the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. The fans out in force, the conditions could not be better as we get ready for race number five, which is now less than four and a half minutes away here in Bermuda.
Let's check in now with Lisa Darmanin and Nathan Outridge. Standing by. Well, it's, it's jam-pank sailing conditions down here on the Great Sound, but it's New Zealand who we've given a really hard time to, but they're looking super fast through the water, Nathan. They are, and this is very similar to the conditions we had in the America's Cup here four or five years ago when they won the America's Cup. So clearly Pete's remembered how to start. He's got that boat going fast, and he'll be targeting a top three today. Well, the points are quite close, but there's lots of mistakes being made around this racetrack. Is the pressure on? Oh, you could see in that race, the pressure was definitely on. Everyone's fighting hard to make up every position they can. They know top three is the goal today, and the error rate was so much higher than yesterday. We saw Canada making some unforced errors. That was losing them positions. Ben missed a couple of shifts, and you can see the pressure getting to these teams. Well, it's all on for race five. All right, back to Lisa and Nathan shortly, but first our explanation of how we make the best use of all our live data coming from the F-50s and the course to explain everything to you back home as the F-50s take flight here in the Great Sound. SailGP uses award-winning LiveLine graphics to display the race course on your screens. Using augmented reality technology, the boundary lines, turning gates, start finish lines, and ladder graphics are overlaid onto the race course. The fastest way for the F-50s to navigate the course is to sail at an angle of 45 degrees to maximize the power they gain from the wind. And to illustrate who is ahead, the ladder graphics are overlaid on the race course. The ladder lines are spaced 100 meters apart allowing us to easily see who is ahead no matter which direction a boat is traveling in. In this example, the Japan team on the right is in the lead, followed by the New Zealand team and then the Danish team in the middle. On the left-hand side, you can see the Great Britain team have some work to do to catch up with the USA team following behind. Here you can see that the New Zealand team are leading the Great Britain team even though they are sailing in different directions as the New Zealand team have made more progress up the ladder. A lot of technology at use here as we get ready to go under 145 for the start of race number five. Freddie, you've been crunching the numbers big time over there. If you were a betting man, whose position do you like the best and who has a lot of work to do? Well, you like to be at the top of the leaderboard going into race five, such a pivotal race. And that is joint first between uh, Great Britain and Canada. Australia one point back. The boat to focus on is New Zealand. They need to make up three points, go from 25 points to above 28, and that will put them into the mix to leapfrog one of those three teams I just mentioned. All right, we've got the condition report from Lisa and Nathan down on the water. We come up now on a minute to go, Stevie. Wow, take your breath away. That opening race to start off day number two, France gets only the second black flag in Sail GP history. That takes the fleet down to eight. France will be back in racing here, so we go back up to nine. We'll see if they play it a little more cautiously. But if the Americans now, do you have to take a risky start here? Do you have to really push the issue? I think Jimmy Spitzer, we need to see a bit of that pit bull uh, mentality and to try and lead here. We've seen how important leading at Mark 1 is. And well, I think now, if ever, is the time to make it happen. 42 seconds to go and I'm looking at the wind data coming off the marks and it's ever so slightly just stepped down two or three kilometers an hour in the last 30 seconds right. that might make it a little bit trickier for the boats to accelerate and get to the line on time well 26 seconds to go that was the voice of Phil Robertson we're not far off here and if he's not far off on board the Canadian boat New Zealand are a long way back how's the timing USA has a nice controlling position New Zealand coming in from the back I don't know if they're going to find a gap down there they're going to really need to thread the needle 10 seconds to go Switzerland at the top of the line but it's going to be Canada out of the middle of the line how's the timing now watch for the line to turn white as the crews turn down Perfect action from Australia there. What a start by Slippery Slingsby across the line, and he's going to lead the fleet away. Chased by Phil Robertson. This is the race that has to happen, and New Zealand are out the back at the moment. The entire fleet up and foiling as they approach mark number one. This is pivotal race number five, and Australia has taken hold of the lead. the voice of Tom Slingsby just calling him around the mark nice and easy they used to be in the front and he sounded very comfy being there 
God, they were stacked four boats wide going round Mark 1. They pretty much all got there together. What that means is the pressure on this jibe and avoiding joke boats out the jibe is massive. Lovely controlling position. The fact that Slingsby can see all those boats behind him means he's going to be full of confidence here. It looks to me like he's going to lead a lot of those boats out from the boundary. Jason Waterhouse steps across, but it's Ainsley on board the British boat. Look at the ladder lines. It shows he may have moved up to second at the moment. Great move by Ainsley in a dark patch of water, and that shows big burst of speed for Ainsley. Slingsby's going to be leading at gate two, but Ainsley's got himself back in the race. And very, very busy in the dog flight. Just off to the left of pitcher there. It's going to be super congested coming between Denmark, Canada and Spain into gate number two. Remember, everyone trying to battle for the top three positions after this race on points. The Australians, the Americans looking for some big points here. Great Britain still in the fight. Well, here we go. It's Great Britain coming in on starboard jive. They have the right of way, but there's a lot more boats getting across in front of them than I thought would. Easy left turn for Slingsby. Whoa, big evasive Whoa. action by Phil Robertson. He has to dive out the way. And it's going to be Ainsley leading out of this side. It does mean he'll have clear wind. Will he be able to find more wind on this side of the course? If he's made the right choice and there is more wind, he's going to go faster and it could get him back in the race. Fourth place for the British crew at the moment, but they have space and we know for sure they're going to send it. And three of the three boats that were in the lead going into this race are currently occupy three of the top four places. It's going to be some happy coach boats from those crews though and at the moment in ninth place it's New Zealand. It's going to maybe need a miracle from here to get Peter Burling and his crew into that final race. Gave themselves hope but as we look at the ladder lines here we're on board the British crew there. That's Luke Parkinson flying the boat. Ainsley, he's now taking control of the rate. The choreography between the six sailors on the boat is incredibly tight. And what else is incredibly tight is going to be this cross with Denmark and Great Britain. Tight, tight cross here. This looks punchy to me. I'm not sure if he's going to make winds the boat. Oh, that was a big change in wind direction there for the British boat. Better to be lucky than good. That's what they say sometimes. And that was beautifully timed by Ainsley. Nathan, What's it looking like down on the course? Are you able to talk to us about any wind shifts just yet? Yeah, it looks like it's windier across the course up here, and Ben Ainsley did a really nice job getting out of phase with the fleet and coming back through on a different angle there. I still think the race is between Australia, Denmark, and GBR at the moment, and the breeze is windier overall, so the boats are going, go, going to be going faster. As they approach the top mark gate, it looks very even to me, and I think once again, the middle of the fleet is going to be very compressed when they get up here. So on leg three of seven here in race number five, Great Britain and Ben Ainsley roll the dice. It comes up Yahtzee as they move into second place behind Australia. The Americans have dropped back to third, one spot ahead of Denmark. Well, it's tight. Look at the bottom left. Look, that's the race to the final there. And we can see Australia and Great Britain look very confident, but there's a big fight in the pack. It's not going to be easier for Canada to hang on here. Can Sir Hestead and his Danish crew gain those vital points? If he can cross in front of Great Britain here, that'll be one step on the journey to make it. Tight cross, though. Great Britain has the right of way. Let's watch this one. It's going to be real close. Easily ahead, comfortably ahead there for Nikolai Sehested. Tom Slingsby looks like he's going to keep it simple and go straight. We hear them saying left and right. He's talking about the wind turning to the left, and that's going to help him turn left, up, and make it round this near gate. And on gate three, they make their way through cleanly. So Slingsby opting for the other side of the course through gate number three, and the Americans are back in the fight as Jimmy Spithill and company have worked their way up to second place, and they'll follow Slingsby around that gate, which is branded near, part of the blockchain technology new to Sail GP. Great work by Jimmy Spithill. That's the voice of Paul Campbell James, the wing trimmer on the American boat. And Phil Robertson, fifth place, but right on the tail of the Danish crew. That's good for the overall. And that is the battle we need to focus on is between Canada and Denmark. Denmark need to try and step up from third place and hope the Canadians slip down to make it into the final three. Nathan, we saw a big gain, we thought, to the American crew at the top of that beat. Was that a big gust of wind? 
Yeah, Lisa and I have been out in a watching the wind and on the left hand side of the course it seems consistently windier. Every time a boat gets out to the left hand boundary, they're making really big gains. And so, you know, with one more lap to go here, it'll be interesting to see if teams go into the centre of the course and step back out to the left or if they keep crossing because that's where Ben seemed to lose all his distance was when he went out to the right hand side. So leg four of seven here in race number five, day two of Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by the Hamilton Princess. Everyone trying to get in the top three on points. They'll get through this gate, they'll go down one more time and then back and then it's the blast to the finish. There you go. That was Kyle Langford saying he liked the pressure in this corner. When he's talking about pressure, he's talking about wind. They want more wind to go fast. Tom Slingsby agrees. I can expect a right turn. I'll be interested to see what the Danish crew do here. Have they done their maths on board and figure out that they need to have a bit of a punt and try and take, overtake the USA and Australia? Will they try and go to the opposite mark? And it looks like they will. This is their play to try and get in the grand final, but they still need Canada to slip down a little bit more as they slip down to sixth. This could be the moment that shakes up the medal race. Denmark certainly did not get the intel from Nathan Outridge and Lisa Darmana down on the water because they are going to that <laughs> other side where the wind reportedly is not happening. So it's Australia, USA, Denmark, Great Britain in fourth as we listen in past gate four. Okay, we show those ladder lines now. As... That's the voice of Ian Jensen, wing trimmer on board the British boat, talking they're going to need to do several manoeuvres up this beat. It's not going to be an easy upwind leg. So that's good news for the crews behind. That means there's opportunity out there. It's on the ladder lines. It shows no big gain for the Danish crew at the moment at the top of the screen. No look look at this body yeah, position down. of the Australian yeah. crew here. They've been working on windage and it looks pretty slick and efficient yeah, there right now. Yeah, for two, sure in one. season two, we definitely saw Carl Langford and Tom Slingsby, the wing trimmer and the driver, hanging over the side of the boat. This year they are tucked down, out of the wind, no, trying to be as aero as possible. There's a fantastic shot of it and just trying to get that boat ripping as fast as possible. It's like drafty behind Freddie Carr on a bike. You get down and low, you get a lot faster right now. The Australians looking very good. The Americans trying to reel them in, but it's a 200 meter distance. And look at these crossings in the middle of the course. And things are changing a little bit here. It's about Denmark being out of phase. They don't want to be going to the same part of the race course as anyone else. They need to try and jump into the top three or four, uh, to top one or two in this race. And again, hope that ha uh, Canada get overtaken yep. by Switzerland or Spain or New Zealand. So Denmark sits in third, Canada sits in fifth. If you're a Danish fan, you're hoping that Switzerland can overtake the Canadians and Denmark can possibly get themselves into the top three into the grand final. For everyone else, it's time to play spoiler. Yeah, what a fantastic shot of the Australian boat. Why do they win? There's a great image there. Look how stable that platform is. Jason Waterhouse is the flight controller on that boat, and he does seem to be a level above everyone else. But we're coming in. Nathan, last chance saloon for Denmark to make something happen. Can you see the Canadians throwing it away from here, mate? So the Danish team have done really nicely out on the left-hand side of the course. I think they've made a gain against USA. The question I have is, is Denmark laying the top mark? If they're not laying that right-hand mark as we look at it, then the power comes to USA. Canada, they're doing just fine. They're just holding position and really the race is going to be, can Denmark really make some inroads here? They're not going to catch Australia. It's just, are they going to beat USA? Board drop coming. This tack could be crucial. They cross in second. Now they tack right on top of the wind to Jimmy Spittle, but Spittle's going nearly twice the speed. Look at the top of the mast now at the moment. Denmark must start to keep clear very soon. Jimmy Spittle can turn him all the way up into the wind and there he go he builds wow great aggressive sailing by Sehested but the old master Spittle he's played that match race games a few times before and he absolutely nails it holds on to second it's going to be tight on this final downwind and, so, and Jimmy Spittle didn't even protest there for the umpires he knew the damage was done as he squeezed the Danish away
So Spithill loses that position momentarily, gets it right back with a veteran move as Denmark now sits in third. And there you see the traffic coming up track and the rest heading away. So it's Australia out in front, the USA and Denmark. This is like six of seven. They'll go to the top of your screen and then a right blast to the finish line. Well, and if we look at the top left, while well, the drama was happening with Denmark and the USA, Switzerland have leapfrogged Canada. That could be crucial. Yep. It just going to need the Danish boat to get past the Americans and the Canadians to drop one more in the whole final race picture changes but a perfect jive from america top speed was only sorry bottom speed was 49 kilometers an hour they did a better jive than the danish and i think they're well set to hold on to this second place from here so there's absolutely no doubt that the danish need to leapfrog the boat we're on board with now the americans and they are also praying that new zealand can squeeze past canada and then we really do have some pretty hot talking points what a way to spend your Sunday in Bermuda at the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess as Sail GP has come to town for season three. Final leg, Australia, Tom Slingsby, the two-time defending champions will bring it home for a win here in race number five. They don't need the aerodynamics right now, gentlemen. They've got such a massive lead as the Americans now come through in second place. Denmark looking for something to possibly get past them as the Canadians have a two-point advantage as it stands right now going into the final. And the win to Australia, and now everyone doing the count back. Wow, it's really tight coming in here in the pack. Look at Canada chasing down the young Swiss team. It's going to be tight there, but I think it's going to be too little too late for Sehested's Danish, Danish team. That jibe on the final run in race yeah. four where they threw away two places. Wow, how costly is that going to be for this Danish team? These things can come back to haunt you, Jimmy Spittle. There we go, second place for USA in race five here. A nice way to finish things for them. Nikolai Sehested is going to be a story of what might have been. Great day from them today. Great Britain taking fourth place. Switzerland uh, having some issues. They're trying to get themselves over to the finish line. They put both holes in the water. And look at this, Canada coming in a drag race. Will they touch the line before the Swiss? Oh, it's going to be inches in it. I think the Canadians snuck it. It's so, so tight. The Swiss missed the last jive, put two holes in the water. And again, what an unfortunate time for that to happen for the young Swiss crew. They dropped from fifth to sixth. That's the voice of Phil Robertson, much better, much tidier. I assume he's talking about the last lap where they did actually manage to get the boat sailing smoothly. New Zealand across the line in seventh. Tough day for the yep. French crew with an eighth after a black flag in race one. And, uh, well, what a day's racing. Spain will wrap things up for race number five. So everything is set now for the final race of the day, race number six. And after some drama there in the middle of the race with the USA really making a mess of Denmark's plans and Canada just hanging on there. It was amazing to see everyone on that last leg still with points to play for. One thing we know, Tom Slingsby getting it done, getting the win in race five, USA second, Denmark in third. This is my key moment of the race. Now, Denmark did a very nice job of getting out of phase on the upwinds. They did a really nice job of splitting away from the fleet and momentarily they overtook the Americans and definitely overtook the British. But the Americans had right of way after that tack and as I said in commentary, he, uh, Jimmy Spithill didn't even press the protest flag. He just did the damage, slowed the Danish down and that for Denmark was not ideal and they could not take the vital points they needed to get into the final. So the Americans salvage the day, finishing second on race number five to go with their third on race number one on day one. There you see the numbers across the board and it is now official. Australia, Great Britain and Canada will be into the big final. And a really tough day for the French here. They were fourth overnight with a shot of getting into the, the final three and a disqualified in an eighth. They've tumbled down the leaderboard. Picture perfect day here in Hamilton with the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. We are under 10 minutes away. Time to catch your breath.
grab it dark and stormy and get ready for the big final. Nathan, I got to say, it puts you on the spot. Who do you like in the final with these three boats? Well, it seems to me that if the Australians get in front, they stay in front and they extend. Why is Tom always happy to be in clear air? Well, Tom loves to sail the boat fast. His mode is a fast mode. And as we saw in that race, and Freddie and Stevie picked it up, they love the aero mode. They love getting down in the boat and sending it. When you're in the pack, you can't do that. You have to have eyes out of the boat. You have to see what's going on. So, you know, I'm thinking when we get into this final race, if Tom gets around the mark in first, he's almost guaranteed the win. Is that why Tom is always so strong in the final? Because there's only three boats, so there's always a clear path for him? Yeah, exactly. As soon as the fleet thins out and you've just got those three boats, he seems to... It's not just Tom, it's the whole crew. They love sending it fast. Jason loves flying the boat on edge. Kyle loves, you know, really controlling that wing and making the boat go quick. And I can just see them right now. They're coming into form. They've had a fantastic day and they're here to finish it off today. The wind has dropped off dramatically. Seven seconds to go. It's all about who can get on the foil. The Australians have the speed. There's the start there. Spitting's done a fantastic job again, but who's going to get on the foils first? It's Australia and Tom Slingsby. They're boosting away towards Mark 1. The camera boat in the way of the Japanese here. Both boats behind off the foils. Yes! Massive game. If I'm honest, that camera boat didn't change the outcome of the start. Nathan Outridge might be looking for excuses. I think deep down he knows that there's no way we weren't going to win that start. We're in the controlling position the whole way. That's a right turn and decide, but they're oh, off the foils. Down. Off the foils here. They've just entered a patch with no wind. Both holes have dropped into the water. This can be disaster for Tom Slingsby. When we saw Tom stopped at the top gate where there was no wind, we all had a hope that we could steal a victory here. At this speed, they're going to close the gap to Australia in no time. I think there's better pressure coming out of there. Yep. Getting the pace on here. Yep. I remember looking through the wing and I saw the other two teams on their foils coming at us doing 30 knots of boat speed and we're stopped dead. I remember sitting there thinking, what, what's going on here? This, is, this isn't right. They're all going to have to believe in him and he has to know that to get them up on the foils. All good, eh? Coming good real quick. We saw the gust yes, of wind, boy. we saw it coming, Take and we said, on. OK, we've just got to position ourselves perfectly here, and we got back on the foils. And it is Australia that claims the title in 2022. <laughs> And there is Great Britain sitting and waiting for their opportunity as they have made it in to the grand final alongside Australia and Canada. It'll be a great day, great conditions here for the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. We now go on board with Ben Ensley. Ben, with the conditions the way they are and the way you guys have been sailing, how are you going to attack this one race off? I think it's going to be a pretty exciting race. Uh, got obviously Aussies on form team and. Uh, Phil Robertson and new Canadian team, you know, exceptional performance getting into the final three. Uh, we know Phil's pretty aggressive, so anything can happen. Expect some fireworks. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Ben Ainsley and Great Britain Sail GP, the defending champions from Bermuda. They look to defend that title here on a pitcher perfect day. The fleet has turned out, the fans all have come down to this beautiful, great sound area to watch the world's best sail these F-50 catamarans. So the final is set after five races. Again, it is Australia, Great Britain, the defending champions at this event from last year, and the new kids on the block with Phil Robertson at the helm, Canada into the final.
So let's meet the drivers that we'll see here in the final. We mentioned Phil Robertson. He has been part of three different outfits. Canada, his latest. There you see the numbers on him. Three world titles with four Sail GP fleet races. One looking for a big performance, and this would be huge for Canada Sail GP if they could get a win in their first outing here in season three. Ben Ainsley, we just spoke with him. He has done just about everything in the world of sailing. Olympic medals, he has five, four of them being gold, 11 world titles, and of course, the America's Cup. He has been a part of the biggest events. And then there's the two-time defending and reigning champion in Sail GP, none other than Tom Slingsby. 10 world titles, an Olympic gold medal, of course, part of that America's Cup victory in San Francisco. So the stage is set. It'll be Canada, Australia, and Great Britain in the great final. Well, in the great final, and the Canadian team here, what a performance the Canadians have done out here in the great sound. And really what's caught my eye on this team is Billy Goodrum on flight controller. He's up against the likes of Jason Waterhouse and Luke Parkinson. Well, he's earned his place in this final, and for this Canadian team, this now is the ultimate test in Sail GP. This is the calm before the chaos. And there is Nick Hutton, the man that made the jump from the Australian team as a, as a jib trimming winner last year. And he's been signed by Ben Ainsley's team. Not only does he bring an incredible amount of fitness and skill, but he also brings the Australian playbook over with him. A nice signing by the British team. Well, and we come across two-time defending champions. Well, it's what hasn't been said about Tom Slingsby, but I think it's the dynamic duo in front of him, Langford and Waterhouse, that really managed to put this boat right on an edge. We all talk about them being the fastest. Why is that? Well, it is how happy Waterhouse is to keep the boat on the edge. And now, well, let's see what you got, guys. Can you deliver again? Coming up on two and a half minutes to go for the final race here at the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. This is the moment all these fans have turned out for to see who will walk away with the title here in Hamilton. Australia just drifting out there. Again, a little bit of intel with them as they get ready. Nathan, as the CEO and driver for Japan, you've raced against all these guys. Who do you think has the advantage and who do you like as we go under two minutes to go before the start of this final race? It's uh, probably too close to call from where I'm at. I think all these three boats have a good chance of winning, but it's going to come down to who's brave enough to push the boat fast enough on this first reach. The breeze is coming up a little bit more, and I think it's between Jason Waterhouse and Luke Parkinson. Who's the bravest to push the boat and fly the boat as fast as they can? We saw what happened in Cadiz. If you push too hard, it's not as windy as that, but I'm pretty sure that these guys are going to be fired up. And looking at the start line right now, the Lewitt end to me looks like the favoured position, so I can see a fight for the Lewitt end. Right, that's really good point by Nathan. I'm going to be having a look at the flight data throughout the race. And I agree with him. I think we could be ranking the flight controllers to see who wins Sail Grand Prix Bermuda in two, uh, 2022. Very interesting here, Stevie. Normally, with two minutes to go, this start box is absolutely packed with all the action. It feels like the drivers and the tacticians on board have entered the start box late and are not showing their hands to the other crews. No, I mean, it was quite interesting. Ben Ainsley sounded a little bit, you know, Phil Robertson's aggressive. He's fighter. He doesn't want to be too near him for me, which is pretty unusual to hear from Ben Ainsley. But I think in this steady, perfect sailing conditions, what they really want is a fast speed race. And what I find interesting as we get ready to hit the 30-second mark, gentlemen, is all of these drivers, Phil Robertson, Ben Ainsley, and Tom Slingsby, have all won races here in the first five that we've sailed so far. Of course, Great Britain winning races one and three, Canada winning race two, and race five, it was Australia. Well, here we go, and first move is Canada. They turn the boat down aggressively towards Australia. The man with the plan on board Australia has control of the start of the moment, but how's the timing? Looking late on Great Britain, really aggressive from the Canadian crew at the moment. It's gonna be really, really tight as we come into the start line now. Two seconds, timing looks good from Australia. Perfect start from Australia. The 
that Canadians are going to have to try and hang on on the inside. And what has the British crew got up to here? Really late at the start. They've got a job on from here. Look at the speeds over 70 kilometers an hour as they approach mark number one. This is the final race. Who will take home the title here in Bermuda? Canada, Australia, or Great Britain? It's going to come down to, that's the voice. Oh, that was the voice there of Kyle Langford saying, we're clear, let's roll down and hurt him. And they've just sailed across them, given them dirty wind. And look at that flight height. Well, Billy Goodrum, he's certainly turned up to play. So what Ainsley's got to think about here is splitting away from the two other boats. I'd expect an early jibe from Ainsley and let Canada and Australia mess around with each other. And there, the British jibe, and they go out to the far-hand side of the course. Here we go. He's just trying to find some space and some other wind on the side of the course. If he follows, he'll only sail in the turbulent wind of the boats in front. So he's looking for advantage on the other side. Perfect jives by all three boats and just 44 metres in it as we're on board Australia. Voice to Tom Slingsby asking them to keep it fast. Great to hear the plans there. Tom Slingsby just constantly talking about his plans, adapting all the time. Looks like one more manoeuvre from all the crews. Slingsby desperate to be going the same way as all the other boats. That gives them less chance of leapfrogging, a, leapfrogging ahead of them. We're on board Australia here, listening to the Australian crew, bringing them upwind at gate number two here, and all the other boats look set to follow. This is great news for Slingsby and Australia, but again, no, it's Ainsley. He turns away, looks to split. He's hoping to find more wind on the other side of the course, but the Australians are going really fast. And look how fast Australia is, more than two kilometres faster than Canada, who follows them. And, Freddie, to your point, Great Britain looking to be happy to get out of phase with the other two boats. Yeah, they've got to look to go and sail in a different patch of water. They really got to hope that Australia and Canada focus on each other so much they don't sail their boats at 100%. They've got to sail in a different patch of water, hope to pick up more wind speed, hope to get a bit of a wind shift and boost them that 100 metres they need to get back into this race. And Slingsby immediately with the manoeuvre there, trying to send the dirty air Canada's way. They have the lead, the two-time defending champions looking to start off season three with a bang. Tom Slingsby here, hoping to take this victory here and take the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix. And there is a smidge more wind for the British team over on that far side of the course, but maybe not enough to make the dent into the leaders right now. Well, the ladder lines currently show a 200 meter advantage over from Australia to Great Britain. The Canadians still staying close, just 88 meters behind the Australian crew. We're halfway up this second beat, and I think it's going to be interesting to Nathan Outridge is positioned more upwind of us. I wonder if Nathan can see any more wind coming down. Any opportunity for these tra chasing boats to be able to catch up out there? The advantage right now coming up on 100 meters. Just let me know if they go more down there. Nathan, we're, uh, we can see the boat setting up. Tom Slingsby's really in a match race mood, tacking every time Canada tacks, trying to block their wind. But can you see any opportunities as we get to the top of this upwind leg? Yes, yeah, Stevie, looking from the shore, the left still seems to be stronger. With, you know, the breeze on the left does look a bit stronger, but at water level, it's very obvious to see once all the fleet's gone and we're just focusing on two boats at the moment that Jason Waterhouse is flying the boat higher. They've got more windward heel on the Australian boat. They're flying it higher, and I think they're in a low mode. They're winning this race, and Tom's just giving Phil absolutely no chances right now to get back into it. Canada's going to need a mistake from Australia and a manoeuvre to get back into this one. And you can see that point that Nathan made there, our top left of picture, that the Australian boat is flying slightly to 10 centimetres higher out the water than the other two boats. More height out of the water means more speed. Interesting thing here is the British have rejoined onto the back of this two-boat match race. So, Stevie, if Australia goes on to win this race and win the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix, does Jason Waterhouse get the MVP award? Certainly should. For me, I think the uh, flight control is absolutely crucial. But now, bottom left here, we see the true wind speeds. There's really not a lot of difference in the winds between the two boats. Just one kilometre an hour. There's not a lot of opportunity for the boats behind. Stevie, right now, if you're Slingsby in the lead, are you defending the Brits or are you defending the Canadians? 
I'm far enough ahead that I'm going to keep it simple. I can set up with an easy move here and then match behind. As they make their way through gate number five, which is branded near in recognition of Sail GP's new global partner, that blockchain technology. Stevie, you're up on all that stuff. This is high tech stuff coming to Sail GP. This is high tech stuff. And of course, there's high tech sailing boats out there on the water right now. And that's a big, big lead for Australia. They've done some real damage up on this upwind leg. 19 seconds. They were just four seconds ahead at gate two. At gate three, it's out to 19 seconds. Pure boat speed there. And the great British crew managing to stay out of phase, constantly sailing yeah. on the opposite side of the course to the boats ahead. They're hoping to find more wind. If they can do that, they'll give themselves a chance. But at the moment, I'm seeing no mistakes. And Ainsley, well, yeah. is that a disgruntled look on him? He is the defending champion from this event last year. But right now, they are certainly just trying to get themselves into second place as they've drawn within 30 meters of the Canadians. Interesting thing is here, the British are going very fast around the course, but because they've been trying to sail on opposite parts of the race course, they've sailed extra distance. So they haven't sailed the perfect tactical race for obvious reasons, but they are going fast. 100% fly time across the board, so perfection on those maneuvers, keeping both holes out of the water. But again, to, to Freddie's point, Australia now 300 meters clear. Tom Slingsby is absolutely putting on a clinic. Remember, he is the two-time defending champion at Sail GP, and what a way to start off this 2022 campaign. That's the voice of Tom Slingsby talking tactics. He's talking of one more maneuver, looking for a left turn. In the background, the battle for second is getting tight. It looks to me at the moment as though the battle for first is all well and done. Ainsley on board Great Britain needs to be sure to be ahead. It's a tight cross. He doesn't have the right away, but he's through. Looks to me like Tom Slingsby's going left turn, and he'll be hoping the other boats follow him. All the chatter on board Australia. We spoke with Tom Slingsby at the start of this regatta. Remember, he said, just get me to the final. I like my chances in a three-boat race. Oh, big grunt from Ben Ainsley there. They splashed the boat in underwater there. Technical maneuver from the Canadians. They're trying to find some space now in third place. Brilliant job by this new Canadian team, but I think it's going to be hard for them from here. They're back now. They've lost 100 metres on Great Britain, and now Australia and Slingsby. Well, he sails all the way to boundary, and look at that. Simultaneous tack with the great British crew. Looks like the Australians have changed their focus. They're now defending Great Britain. So he's calling for a little bit softer this beat. Remember, it's down and back, and then the blast of the finish line, and the race is over. And as the Canadians voice, the, the softer this beat, uh, guys, which was off board uh, Carl Langford, as he said that, his wing shape changed dramatically looking at the data, and he changed the power setup in the huge wing sail and uh, got the boat ripping in what looks to be a little bit softer breeze. Well, it'd probably be interesting to get out on the water and find out if Nathan's seeing that bit more wind on the course. It's going to make a change of situation out there, but at the moment, looks very tight. Nath, are we going to see any big changes before the end of this race, mate? Well, from, from where I'm looking, it looks like GBR are catching up a lot, and I've been looking closely at the wings. I don't often get a chance to see these boats sailing up and close, and I've got the data out here on my phone as well. And on that downwind, Ian Jensen, the wing trimmer on GBR, was running a lot more twist than the other two boats. The boat was ripping downwind, and it seems like they've been able to make some big gains in this race by just changing the setup of the power control on the wing, getting the boat going faster. And Tom now is keeping a really close cover on GBR, but I think that was why they made the big game was just Ian Jensen making a small change on the wing and uh, GBR are back in this race. Well, these flight, these uh, wing trimmers are a little bit like aeroplane pilots, but we see here on the screen, look at that, now just 100 metres separating all three boats. This race is far from over. I love the position Slingsby's put himself in. All the boats on the same tack, all heading in the same direction. That's great news, but look at it. It's perfection on all the teams at the moment. They're really sailing these boats to the limit. It's going to come down to the detail of these final more maneuvers as they arrive at this top ley line. One more tack to go before the final upwind gate.
You couldn't ask for much more as we come up on leg number six of seven. Then it'll be to the top of the course and then the sprint to the finish line. These are the F-50s, the world's best sailors doing battle here at the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. Just setting up for a bear away, turning away from the wind. Slingsby has to change his rudder setting. These are like Formula One drivers. It's tight. Is there an overlap there with Canada and Great Britain? Doesn't look like it. They're going to follow each other around. Ainsley in second, tied together by a piece of string with the Canadian crew, but they're 200 metres behind the two-time Sail GP champion, Slingsby in Australia. And there you go. That was Ainsley. We're on a match with Canada. Ainsley's given up on winning this event. He's focused now on securing second. And we know that season points overall are massive as we arrive to our 11th event in San Fran at the end of the season. Here we go, simultaneous jibes. Canada turn in the background. And with Great Britain we're gonna go with, but we're back with the leaders now. Just seven or 800 meters to go until this final gate. And there's no mistakes coming from this Australian crew so far. You look at the resume for Australia, guys, over the last two days, and it hasn't been overly stellar. It's been consistently solid. On race day number one, they went four, five, and three. So it's not super impressive. Then the first race today, they finished in fourth, but it's that fifth race where they get the win and the momentum carrying them in this final. They just look like they picked off right where they left in San Francisco. What do we always say about the Australians? They're fast and they stay out of trouble. Yep. And that's exactly what they've done here in Bermuda. It's really the consistency, I think it's a bit of maturity from Tom Slingsby as well to stay patient even when he is in those fights and, and just keep the results coming, chip away, chip away and he's just done a great job of that and then when you've got the likes of Waterhouse, Langford, Newton and Fowler in front of you, there's just not mistakes happening. So the Australians won five from eight events last year. They're gonna go on and win here in Bermuda. Are we making that six from nine? That is pretty impressive. The speed still over 60 kilometers an hour for the Australians as they bring it home. A great recovery by Sir Ben Ainsley as they were last in third. They move up to second place for the valuable points, and Canada has dropped back to third place. But as we come to the finish line, the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess goes the way of the two-time defending champions. Australia brings it home. Great Britain will claim second place, and Canada, a great performance. Guys, remember, this is a brand new team, and on the first event, they get themselves into the great final. And the debriefing already underway on board. That's interesting, isn't it? That was the voice of Ian Jensen saying, at the start, I had the wheel, then the comms caught out, but there was obviously a bit of a tricky spot in the last maneuver into their lineup. You just can't. You can't take mistakes against this Australian crew. If you if you make mistakes, they punish you, and they're not making them themselves. So it's deja vu all over again as the green and gold will celebrate another victory. Fresh off their repeat in Sail GP San Francisco, the two-time defending champions have start the campaign in season three with a big win in Bermuda. Pretty interesting for the other crews to listen in there because Tom Slingsby just saying there, the strategy of going after whoever's in second and staying with that. Oh, show me the money, Jason Waterhouse. <laughs> All right, guys, let's break this thing down. They were clean, they were cool under fire, and they, as DeFreddy said, they kept themselves out of trouble. Freddie, you talk about foiling efficiency, you talk about the way they sailed the boat, the way they, oh, it was amazing. Yeah, and this is the foil efficiency, as we'd expect across all these crews, 100% flight time. We talk about trying to fly it as high as possible, and actually Great Britain, Luke Parkinson flew a little bit higher. The number that stands out is foil stability as a percentage. If you hit 100%, it's basically as a perfect computer would have flown the foil around the race. So what we've seen there is Jason Waterhouse is the most computer-like. He was completely <laughs> dialed into what we call the targets. He did a very, very nice job of sailing it as close to perfect as possible. 
All right, thank you, Freddie. We take a look at the final scoreboard here. After six races in Bermuda, it is Australia that picks up the win, and so now they have 10 points as they look to defend the two titles they've won in a row. They pick up the 10 points. Great Britain, nine. Canada finishes in third with eight. Denmark and the USA rounding out the top five. Still work to do for the Kiwis, Spain, and France, and Switzerland, new to the party. Stevie, that was seriously a baptism by fire. That was a, a, just a brilliant start to season three. I think Canada have performed incredibly, but wow, it was ominous to see how good. I thought these one race winner takes all races would be hard to win, certainly with any level of consistency, but, but Slingspin and his crew, they seem to have a bit of a handle on it, and it's gonna take a real change of attitude from the other crews to make sure they catch up. So congratulations to Tom Slingsby in Australia. They get the win. Great Britain finishes in second. And Canada, new to the party of Sail GP Season 3, finishes in third place. All right, let's take a look at the highlights, guys, and what a time it has been here in Bermuda. And again, Australia with the start. Well, and what a start it was by Tom Slingsby, right on the beer, the bang, but it was Ben Ainsley's British crew that caught my eye. Look at them out the back when that gun went, and that was really definitive. And there was amazing comms coming into this Mark one, and uh, it was talk is Tom Slingsby and Carl Flangwood saying hurt them here, push over the top of them, and that's why they stepped down the ladder as the Brits took the opportunity to step away for the first time and get out of phase. And we see at this level all of the manoeuvres pretty much perfectly executed. The boats were flying on the edge the whole time, but Tom Slingsby very noticeably turned it into a match race. He always wanted to try and stay on the wind, close bit of water to his opposition, not giving them any opportunity. And they both, Canada and Great Britain, had their turns at taking a dig at Tom, and he just sailed fast in front of them and defended whoever he thought was the important person to defend. This was a key moment. Yes, they didn't win it, but season points are up for grabs, and we know how important that is when we get to the latter end of the season. So, yes, you want to be getting second place if you can't get first. Absolutely. It's all about points and making as many points as you can over the season. But it was telling for me here that as they came round that mark, Ainsley had given up on catching Australia. He was right. Slingsby, Jason Waterhouse, we put him down as our star, star performer on the day, I think. And these flat water, you know, to foil it on the edge was absolutely key. Well, New Zealand had more luck off the course in season two, being crowned Impact League champions for season two. And today we are pleased to announce the league will take place again this season and it will be even better with more clean energy innovations both on and off the water. More purpose and more impact will result as the teams do their best to help the planet on and off the water. And at every Sail GP event, we'll also be working with local organizations such as the Bermuda Seagrass Project to help their sustainability programs. Sail GP has funded the preservation of nearly 500 square meters of seagrass beds in the marine environment, which has been endangered through the overgrazing by the turtles. Congratulations to Sail GP New Zealand, Sail GP powered by nature. Well, the party continues out on the water, and once again, Australia gets it done. They get the victory to kick off the campaign for season number three, and Tom Slingsby, Stevie, was sensational. His whole crew, for that matter. Yeah, Tom, we are uh, looking in on you now out there. You don't seem to be making it any easier for the other uh, crews out there. How are you keeping this performance going? Where are these gains coming from? Uh, yeah, look, I, I think it's really the gains are coming through confidence. Uh, we just keep saying if we make that final race, we're hard to beat, and we uh, we really perform well in those final three boat match races. We're turning into a bit of a specialist in the three boat match race, which uh, I didn't think would happen. But yeah, we've just got a lot of confidence when we hit that final race. That's a very nice skill to have, uh, Tom, being a specialist in a three boat match race in this format. I love your low windage mode, mate. You look like a cycling peloton, but you've got to tell Carl Langford to not hang his arm over the side. He looks like he's having a Sunday drive. <laughs> yeah, I know. He looks like a bit of a cowboy. We told him to tuck it in, but he, uh, he just doesn't listen to us. And if we keep getting results like this, I can't tell him much more because it's, whatever he's doing is working. Tom, you guys get to celebrate in Bermuda uh, this win, and then you get ready to move on to the next stop in Chicago. Uh, it's going to be a totally different situation there. What do you anticipate when you get to the States? Chicago will be a tough venue for us. It'll be, oh, they've gone early. 
Uh, Chicago would be a tough venue for us, but uh, really tough conditions off the city often, shifty patchy. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to it, and yeah, we will hopefully do this again. Tom, thanks for your time. Go celebrate with the boys as the champions of the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. It goes the way of Australia Sail GP. Well, I'll tell you what, they are having a good time out there, and I think they're used to this, Stevie. I think they know a thing or two about popping a cork or two. Well, they do seem to be fairly comfortable with a bit of champagne, and as you said, nice problem to have getting used to this winning. So, chaps, you're the other 10 team, nine teams in Sail GP. What are you doing to catch up with the Australians? Well, the advantage is they can get and look at the data, but I think there's nothing really to hide away from the fact that this crew's happy to push. So I think you've got to get out in training and be happy to make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, because Jason Waterhouse is just flying the boat higher, pushing it boat more on the edge. Well, there's one thing establishing what you need to do, Stevie, but it's another thing altogether having the skill set and to be able to do it. Well, and Tom said confidence. I mean, yeah, it's skill set, but practice makes perfect. This is probably the most experienced team in Sail GP, but they've made the most of those hours. They're sailing with a smile on their face, and that's just great to see. And following up your point, Stevie, you know, Jimmy Spithill said it really appropriately. He said, this team has been together longer than anyone else. Is this the reason why we're seeing these victories? Uh, I certainly Thank don't think guys. it hurts. I mean, it's interesting. There have been crew changes this year. Tom's got a tight group there. They seem to have a fantastic team spirit. They've dropped out Nina Curtis and brought in Tash Bryant, but it's been fairly seamless in that ta tactician role. Tash has done a great job here. They've never been out of position. And well, tactically, they seem very, very good. They're having more problems with their flag than the rest of the fleet. <laughs> Oh, the Aussies down. will figure it out. It is upside <laughs> down. There you go. Congratulations once again to Australia. And we'll show you the scoreboard one more time, the way it rolls here in season number three. What a start as we are excited as we will have 10 teams racing in full by the time this is over, guys. Australia left no doubt about it. They are the team to beat. And I'm looking at Denmark there. We saw them in race four. They were having a battle with the Kiwis going down that last run. I thought they were going to go on to win that race. They then had some problem where they lost about three or four boats, and that was the end of their regatta. Yeah, well, Freddie and I, Todd, do a, do a deep dive podcast around Sail GP, and Great Britain and Australia were two of my picks to make it to the final. I did also pick New Zealand, and I think New Zealand and USA, they're the ones that grab my eye. They need to go away from this event and seriously make some changes, because that is not a good enough performance for such high-caliber crews. So, yeah, well, well, fantastic to see Canada up there. Great work by Denmark, but there's certainly four or five teams that need to go away and take a real look at themselves. So that puts a wrap on the Bermuda Sail Grand Prix presented by Hamilton Princess. Next up, it's the Windy City on Lake Michigan. You heard Tom talk about it. It'll be a whole different world, and we look forward to seeing you there in June for Sail GP Chicago. So on behalf of Stevie Morrison, the legend Freddie Carr, Lisa Darmanin, and the real wind whisperer Nathan Outridge, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now, Australia Rail Supreme in Bermuda. The same all day, took me a long time but never quit it, no way. And I ain't hiring nothing, I ain't doing two pays on my beat flight. To the top, the French are trying to pull up in. Wow, that was punchy as the line went through. I'm always on the pitch, I'm not a line man. That's their big moment in the race there. The Kiwis on day number two take the win. Australia brings it home. Turn the beat up, turn the beat up.